Good morning, you wonderful people. I'm just going to get on here and talk for a minute. I'm not going to post any scripture. But I feel led to speak to somebody who's in a way. Now, the weight can be discouraging. The weight can be a test of your faith. I remember living in Nashville, Tennessee. I was bartending. Now, I was grateful for my job. I was grateful for the opportunity. I was grateful um, for some of the people I worked with. I was grateful that God was providing for me. But then on the other side, waking up every single day, every single day, to work eight, nine, ten hours, you know, drive an hour, get to work, work eight hours, and drive an hour home. Every day for somebody else, to me, got discouraging. It was like I knew there was more, but I didn't know how to achieve it. There was something in my heart that said, there's more than this. Don't settle. And I didn't know how to get there. I remember one night laying in my bed almost on the verge of tears thinking is this what the rest of my life is going to be like am I going to work for somebody else for the rest of my life now jobs are cool I'm not saying everybody's not built for jobs and I'm one of those people I'm just not built for a job ever since I was a kid um, I used to um start my own businesses. I got my first job at 11. I was 11 years old. I worked at a pizza place. I played football. <laughs> I had a little job. 11 years old. I like working. I enjoy working. I turned my locker into a candy store. I used to sell baseball cards. I was a little hustler. I wasn't built for it. I wasn't built to work for somebody else. I was built to create my own wealth God says I give you the power to create wealth and that's in us so to that person out there feeling frustrated like there's more there is I promise you there is but you're in process <laughs> the process doesn't always look like the promise it looks opposite why? because you're being trained you're learning how to treat people you're learning how to manage your time you're learning how to be in situations and keep your cool. You're learning how to deal with different personalities. You're learning how to be a leader. You can't just lead immediately. You have to learn how to follow before you can be a good leader. And that's something I had to realize. I wanted it all right then and right now. Now I'm sitting here on Sunset Boulevard. I'm about to walk into rehearsal for my second film this month, second project. And I was thinking on the way here, man, I remember that fateful night when I was laying in the bed and all hell broke loose in my life. And I had just got divorced. I was facing time in prison. <laughs> um, I had just came to the Lord, so a lot of the friends that I had, we just were in disagreement. You can use it on your pit's chest and even your nothing personal it's just you know when you come to the Lord your priorities change your heart starts to change um, what you believe change what you see for yourself changes how you see the world changes and how can two walk together unless they agree you know they can't so people who depart from your life after you walk into the knowledge of Christ and who you are and what he has for your life they're not bad people you just you're going in different directions, you know? You still love them. They're still good people. But the saint must walk alone. The saint must walk alone because outside influence will end up dragging you down from a place that God is trying to lift you up to. But your vision, the vision will come. I'm sitting right here on Sunset Boulevard about to walk in this rehearsal. And I was thinking to myself, how did I get here? 
I lost everything. How did I get here? Y'all, I was making decision, decisions like, should I pay my phone bill? Or should I put gas in my car? Should I eat or pay my car insurance? <laughs> there was times where I was scraping change from under the seat of my car before it got repo. I was scraping change from under the seat of my car thinking, man, if I can just find another quarter, I'll have $3. And I would go and buy a bag of chips and a soda. And I was grateful. But I knew in my heart that there would be more. There's more. There's always more. I promise you. Your process doesn't look like the promise. It'll happen suddenly. Fast forward. <laughs> it's almost like it didn't happen. None of it. I've heard it before. God will put you in rooms and places where you'll look up at where you are and you won't understand how you got there and that day is today. That day was last week. That day was last month, last year. See, God will give you a preview of your destiny while you're in process. That's why a clean heart is important because if you have jealousy in your heart, if you have envy, if you have insecurity, if you have low self-esteem, if you don't know who you are, you will be jealous of the people who were sent to minister to you and be an example. When Joshua and Caleb entered into the promised land, they brought back fruit for the rest of Israel to see. They said, look, the land is good. Now just imagine of the people who were jealous of Joshua and Caleb and missed out on their destiny. That's why a clean heart is important. You will end up biting the hand that's trying to feed you. Jealousy and envy. Destiny killers. But God made a way for Joshua and Caleb. They slayed the giants in the land. They took possession of it. Even when they took possession, they were still giants. So even when you get to your promise, there's still going to be things that um, you have to slay. There's still going to be giants you have to kill. Because God takes us from faith to faith and glory to glory. We're always moving. Like him. He's always working. We're always elevating in Christ. Until we leave this earth, we'll always be elevating. So we're always going to be in process from somewhere, from one place to another. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians three eighteen says, "For we all, with an unveiled face, as in a mirror, are seeing the image of the Lord. As we're progressively being transformed from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, which is a spirit." Mm -hmm. I said I wasn't giving the scripture, but I can't help it. Your dream will come to fruition. I've looked up and I've been in. $20 million houses. I've been in $15 million houses. I've been in, in rooms with people and celebrities that y'all all know. I'm not going to say any names because it's not about that. But I found my places. I found myself in rooms and places. Where I'm like, how did I get here? I was scraping change just a few years ago. Now I'm walking on set to rehearse um, for a film. I used to see myself on the TV when I was younger. God is good. God is able. The other day I was in a $10 million house. I'm looking around like, how did I get here? So if you grew up in poverty, if you grew up in lack, and God has showed you that vision, the devil will always overplay his hand. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. It's opposite of what you're experiencing. Your process doesn't look like the promise. Hang in there. God is impartial. He did it for me. He will do it for you, for the benefit of you and everybody around you. Remember Joseph? Don't look at what's happening to you. Don't look at what they said about you. Don't look at what they did to you. Don't look at the impossibilities. Don't look at your circumstance. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. The promises of God are yes and amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.